Church. My name's Dan, I'm the training minister of the church. Whether you are a regular of the church family or you're just looking in at online church, let me extend a very, very warm welcome to you. It's lovely to know that you're gathering online with us as we meet to, to sing and to pray and to hear from God's word. We uh, rejigged our service last week and we're going to carry on with that same model this week. So our talk and our Bible reading are going to be slightly towards the beginning of the service with a longer time of praise and prayer and worship towards the end. This is just to engage the kids in our talk uh, in our church, hopefully a little bit better. Um, as last week, if you've got any feedback, please let me or John know. As we begin our time together, as we so often do, to get away from the hustle and bustle and the distraction of the heat this week why don't we take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts to worship the lord let me lead us in a prayer as we begin heavenly father help us as we gather to worship and praise you. As we hear from your word, would we be fed and encouraged? As we praise you, would we realise that all of life is to be lived in worship of you? As we pray to you, would we know that you hear the prayers of your children and that you will answer them more wonderfully than we could ever possibly imagine? And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're thinking about God's sovereignty, his control over people being saved and just to help us think about that to think of the amazing love that God has for us I've got my little Lego man here and I was thinking about what does it mean that God saves us what does it mean that he shows us grace well what God does is he takes little uh, takes people and he sticks them so I'm going to put lots of glue on the back of my man and he sticks us all of us to Jesus by faith God loves us. God has saved us and he sticks us to Jesus. That is why we can praise and worship and know his love and forgiveness because God chooses to stick us to Jesus. It's not us. It's what God has done. It's because of that we have complete assurance and delight in worshipping him, knowing that he delights in our praises. The fact that God sticks us to Jesus is even more amazing when we realise that we often don't follow uh, Jesus as we should. And so we're going to say a prayer that we've uh, said for the last two weeks, a child friendly prayer based on Psalm 51. And the words will come up on the screen as we confess our sin and praise God and ask for his help together. So read along the words on the screen with me. Father God, against you we sin, doing wrong with every day, in what we think, in what we do, and in the things we say. But Jesus took our punishment, in love he bore our sin. Forgive us, change us, give us joy, as we belong to him. Amen. Well, with that assurance of forgiveness in our hearts, I'm going to hand over to the musicians who are going to lead us in praise and worship of our God. Our God is great, the Father of creation. His splendor fills the earth. The lightning crash the thunder sings his praises The galaxies can't help but shout his word My soul must sing to you an offering How great you are My soul must sing Oh let the heavens ring
flesh God's promise to the Father He came with power to save The light of life Was crushed for our rebellion He died our death and rose up from the grave My soul great to worship the Lord isn't it to be assured of his forgiveness and love as he sticks us to Jesus and then to praise him having done that Sarah is now going to lead us as uh, she reads our New Testament reading for us and then John is going to speak to us so over to Sarah we're reading Luke 10 verse 17 to 24 That's Luke 10, verse 17 to 24. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the dirt demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father. And no one knows who the Father is except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hello everyone. Welcome again. If you're new to us, my name's John Hobbs. I'm the minister at Grace Church. Uh, and this is Alfie. Can you give him a wave? Well, we're here to think a little bit about that passage in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 17 to 24. This is an all-age talk, as you can see by Alfie joining us. If you are a teenager or adult, we hope you'll click on the link below this video and watch the 30 minute sermon where I try and unpack this amazing passage that's got so much to help us know something of joy in the Lord, even through the struggles of lockdown. But for now, we're going to say a prayer. Let's just close our eyes and focus on God as we pray together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to this passage, would you help us to see just how much we have to rejoice in because of Jesus and to be able to rejoice. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, Alfie, as you can see, has got his party hat on. It's not his birthday today, but he's happy anyway. And he's happy even though life's not always good for Alfie. Do you know, I haven't picked him up since this time last Sunday. So he's been very lonely. Well, that helps us understand something in our passage today. You see, Jesus is teaching us how we can be happy and find joy even when life can be quite hard. Think for a moment, if you can. What are some of the things that make you sad at the moment? Perhaps it's not being able to see friends, not being able to go out. Perhaps you realise you're missing school. Well, even though those things can make us sad, there is much for us to be happy about as Jesus followers. Well, can you think back to last time? Can you remember what was that work Jesus asked his followers to do? See if you can tell your parents. Did you get it? He asked them to be harvesters. He said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And can you remember what they were harvesting? That's right, it was people. I think we've got our little basket down here. And in it, people. They were harvesting people. They were telling them about Jesus and the kingdom of God where he rules and puts all that's wrong right. Well, we learned that it can sometimes be hard harvesting people for Jesus. When we tell others about him, they can be nasty. It might mean that we have to go without things in order to tell people. And actually, we all have to give up time. Time to draw alongside people and help them come to know Jesus for themselves. And following Jesus more generally can be hard, can't it? In fact, life can be hard sometimes. Well, Jesus teaches there are three things that we can always rejoice in, even when things are very hard. And if you're a child or an adult, these are things he wants you to think on. Pray for God to help you to rejoice in. And then, well, to do it, to give God thanks and praise. Well, the first thing is that we're in the basket. We're in the basket. Here it is. I don't have a mini me. Let's see if I can get someone who's pretty close. What do you think? In the days when my hair was a different colour, maybe. Well, it's wonderful to think about the fact that we can rejoice because we are being harvested for the kingdom of God too. Have a look down at verse 20 in your Bibles if you can. What does Jesus say we should rejoice in when his friends come back from their mission? Can you see it? See if you can tell your parents. That's right. He says rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Well, children, I wonder if your parents have ever booked you into a restaurant. If they did, you might have arrived and the waiter checked down a list to see if your names were there. And if they were, hooray, you get that pizza or you get that burger, whatever it was that you enjoyed. Well, most simply, a Christian is someone who so believes that Jesus is God's son and king who died and rose again, that they do two things. First, they ask his forgiveness when they do wrong. And second, they seek to please him by doing right. So if you're someone who believes Jesus is God's son and king, who died and rose from the dead, and you ask his forgiveness when you do wrong, and you seek to please him by doing right, well, then you're a Christian. And you can rejoice that your name is on the list of heaven. Isn't that such good news? Well, have a think about some of the things that you're looking forward to about heaven. What could they be? Hmm. Perhaps you're looking forward to being with everyone else that loves Jesus, family members and friends forever. Perhaps you're looking forward to this world, but 
better in every way than all the best things about it now. Perhaps you're looking forward to actually feeling those moments when you love your parents and feel so at one with them and your family. Well, feeling that towards God and being full of love with him every moment of every day, it's going to be brilliant. And Jesus says, no matter how hard life can get, no matter how sad you might feel, think on those things and rejoice that if you're a Christian, your name is written in heaven. Well, isn't it wonderful that whether we're doing well or doing badly, whether we feel good about ourselves or not, that's all true. But there's a second thing. Secondly, Jesus says, don't just rejoice that you're in the basket. Rejoice at the others in the basket, too. You see, if I look in here, there's lots and lots of people. Loads of them. And, you know, that is something to rejoice in. Verse 21. What does Jesus say? Full of joy and through the Holy Spirit. He says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden the things of the kingdom from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. And so he's full of joy. Now, Jesus does rejoice when little children come to him. But kids, he's actually using you at this point to be a little bit of an illustration to the adults. You see, adults, what Jesus is saying is he's saying those that the father draws to faith are those who are ready to be like little children. Little children don't think they know better than Jesus. They're ready to learn from him. Little children don't think they're really good and they always get things right. They get very frustrated sometimes, don't they? At how badly they get things wrong. Well, God brings to himself those who are like that, who recognise that they need to learn from Jesus and recognise they need forgiveness from Jesus too. And he's doing a big work all over the world in bringing so many people in. Can you see the picture on the wall behind me? It's a picture of the world. Guess how many people every year God brings to faith in Jesus? 65 million people throughout the world every single year. We can rejoice in that, can't we? But also think about Christians at our church. We can rejoice at God what God is doing in them too. Well, there's a third thing we can rejoice in. Not just that we're in the basket and that many others are in the basket too, but that we get to see the basket. It's a strange one, this, but have a look at verses 23 and 24. Jesus turns to his disciples and says, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but didn't see it, and to hear what you hear, but didn't hear it. Well, kids, you know, when I was a child, many of the programmes on TV were black and white, not colour. We had colour TVs and we had colour programmes, but some were black and white, and that meant they were a bit blurred and they weren't as wonderful to watch. And there were only three channels. But now... There's so many channels you can't count them and everything's in colour and there's so much therefore to see. Well, people who lived before Jesus, it was a bit like watching black and white TV. They only understood a little bit about Jesus. It was a bit blurred. It wasn't quite clear who he was going to be, exactly how he was going to do what he did. And it was not quite as wonderful, therefore, because they didn't fully understand but for us who live after Jesus, well, it's like the days of colour. We get to understand exactly who Jesus is. We get to see the things he did, which build up our faith. We get to experience his life changing us and building little parts of the kingdom of God here, even now in our churches as we relate to each other in love, you see. Well, look, when life is hard, we can rejoice that we're in the basket. There's so many others in the basket, but we get to see the basket as well. We get the privilege of living and this time. Well, I've got around here something very special for us today. Can you see what it is? It's a party popper because I think these things are worth celebrating. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa! 
I think I'll put that on Alfie's head there just so he can see it. Do you know, some people find it very hard to feel joyful. Perhaps you do. Well, Jesus says, stop thinking about the things that make you sad and think about the things that can make you glad. Stop thinking about the things that can make you sad and think about the things that can make you glad. Stop thinking about your problems. Think about Jesus' wonders, about heaven, about those he's bringing to be with us there and about all the wonders of being a Christian. And if then you ask God to help you rejoice and start telling him how amazing those things are, guess what? You'll see. You'll start to rejoice and feel happy too. Well, shall we say a prayer and we'll ask God to do just that for us. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for the many good things you've given us through Jesus. Help us not to think on the things that make us sad, but on the things you've given that can make us glad. Help us to say thank you to you. And when we do, we pray that you would help us to find joy, even in the times of hardship. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's been lovely to uh, be with you. We're going to sing in response to that now. Over to the musicians. Oh uh-huh. 
It's almost as if we're, we're filled up as we praise him in singing. It's just a natural response, isn't it? And often that response also wants to make itself known in prayer. So let's take a bit of time now at home to pray out loud. Um, I'm not going to say anything for, a, for about 30 seconds, an opportunity for us to pray at home. So please do that now. Well, please let me draw those prayers to a close. And we're now going to have an interview with Isaac um, from Lion of Judah, who's going to help us uh, think a little bit about the, the ways that music and the band Lion of Judah can encourage us during our time in lockdown. So over to our interview. Hi, guys. Well, we're going to have an interview with Isaac now. We're sitting in his uh, back garden. And um, for those of you who don't know, Isaac is the person who puts together the services every Sunday. Um, so we want to say a big thank you to you, Isaac. Thank you for all the hard work you've been doing with that. Um, the reason we're having this interview is because uh, you are a member of Line of Judah. Yeah. 
Um, for those of us who don't know, would you be able to just tell us a little bit about Line of Judah, what it is, who you guys are? Yeah, so uh, Line of Judah is a band, basically. Uh, we, we set it up maybe 2015, I think is my best guess. Um, there's five of us involved, um, and they're kind of like a, our secret sixth uh, member, uh, Jez, who actually is at Grace Church as well. Um, but yeah, we're just like, a, it's hard to kind of di define the genre as well, because that's, I guess that's music these days. But we're kind of a pop group. Um, we make music that is, um, it could appear to be like very secular. So we set up, set up the band in a very secular, typical music industry way. But we write lyrics that are about the gospel, about like our relationships with Jesus. And so it's a, in that sense, it's a Christian band. Cool. So just just on that, can you tell us a little bit? you this. You set this band up in a kind of secular way of Christian music. Can you tell us a bit about your values and the mission of the band? Yeah. So so it ties in with that really. We set it up in the first place, I think, because I so said Josh, who's the lead singer and is actually my older brother as well, um, had been playing in secular bands, and I think he was getting tired of essentially writing lyrics that he didn't believe in. <laughs> And so we set it up just because we recognise that Christian music, and uh, some people might take offence to this, but we found it to be a little bit stale. In that, like, there's there's lots of very certain, there's lots of particular types of Christian music. Yeah. And so it's hard to look at the UK scene in particular and see loads of different styles going on that aren't necessarily worship music, but are still writing lyrics that are worshiping God. So I think we just wanted to add into that scene, try and catalyze something and and be a voice in that that's that's good music, not necessarily worship, but just Christian music uh, that that's, meets the same standards as any, any other music you would want to listen to, but still hopefully reaches people in a meaningful way and comforts Christians, but also reaches out to people who don't know Jesus. And so in that sense, it's, yeah, it's kind of like mission work and reaching people. Um, so you're kind of, you've got this great vision for reaching out, you say encouraging Christians, um, reaching out to people who don't yet know Jesus. You started back in 2015, uh, kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about how the Lord's been using that vision? Because it, it's, it's grown quite a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, and we've been like really amazed to see how it's, it's, God's been using it as well. So it's really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, surprisingly, we're in terms of our audience, we're relatively small in the UK okay and um, much bigger in the US and being yeah. specific like Texas okay so Dallas and Houston and stuff is like quite far apart in this uh, demographic but then like also it's really cool to see that we have like a, a big following in um, Brazil oh cool which is one of those ones that just turns out to be a place that loves Christian music yeah um, and so, yeah, that's cool, reaching like South America really well. But then like, we have listeners in, in almost every country, but for sure, the US, and very specific parts of the US, and places like Brazil. And then, so at the moment, we're, we're seeing, off the top of my head on Spotify, roughly like 30 to 40,000 unique monthly listeners. Wow, okay. So when you look at it in that, in that sense, um, it's cool to think that we're reaching 40,000 and it, it varies drastically as well yeah. sometimes go up to 60 sometimes down to 30 um, but that that many different people each month that's really cool to see that's really cool and I know that you guys have had a fair bit to do in the UK with outreach in the student world as well so yeah. and that's been really excellent to see yeah so when we started off we played a, a bunch of um, C CU gigs basically yeah. at different universities and that kind of propelled us I think but that was a really fun uh, especially yeah. in terms of our UK audience for sure yeah. Uh, but that was a fun period and it was cool to be able to go and bless those people as well that's great I just, sorry I just mentioned that because in terms of encouraging Christian students but also reaching out like <laughs> had a worldwide impact which is really cool yeah um, one of the reasons for having this interview isn't just to say we've got like a celebrity band at church although that's really cool we're able to say that um, it's also that uh, we know that during lockdown things can be quite hard like lots of us struggle to just sometimes just to get through the day and I, we know that having Christian music that causes us to reflect, um, to uh, to just be reminded of some of God's goodness, uh, can be really helpful for so many people. 
can you just tell us a little bit about how some of the themes um, and ideas in some of the songs you've played can help a couple of, uh, help people? So if we're just feeling, oh, this is really hard, we have good Christian music that isn't worship music to kind of dig into. Yeah, so I think one of the cool things about it, and this is, it's got nothing to do with me really because I don't write lyrics, but jo I think Josh is quite good at writing lyrics that are very personal mm. and come from a place of his own experience. And so you can see that in all of our music and particularly two pieces that come to mind. We've got an EP called um, Treasure, Actually, no, the first one we wrote, Buried at Sea, was very much about the anxiety that he was going through. Yeah. So that's massively relatable for a lot of Christians. Yeah. Even for myself, like, working on that, it was really cool. Yeah. Um, and the same with our most recent one, The Antidote, which kind of focuses on how uh, Jesus is the antidote to a lot of the issues that we can struggle with. Yeah. But my point is, like, a lot of our different pieces have very specific things that might help you as a believer um, and hopefully it's still in encased in a form that's enjoyable like music wise yeah like you should be able to just enjoy it as music yeah but, but then hopefully it will speak to you in, in a profound way as well cool so actually if, if some of us are wanting some encouragement at this time we're finding it's just a bit difficult like, trying to find some of your music could really help a number of us in many different um circumstances I know I've been encouraged by some of your music particularly some of the songs of Buried at Sea which speak of the like the real difficulties of being a believer mm -hmm. and clinging to Jesus in the middle of that mm -hmm. um, if we wanted to find the music from Line of Judah where would we find it? Kind of anywhere that you listen to music Okay. so Spotify, Apple, Amazon all of the music streaming services um, and then there's also physical copies of stuff as well which, which you can find online um, but the easiest way to kind of get to all of that is just through the social media stuff. So we're on Instagram and Facebook. Just cool. search Line of Judah UK. Cool. So we've got this amazing resource that's blessing the church and it's really easy to get hold of. So that's... And it's, yeah, it's free as well. So <laughs> Sorry, this feels like a really unnatural plug, but it is just kind of a way of <laughs> equipping us as a church in whichever way we can to, um, to be built up and just encouraged to follow Jesus. Um, great we're in your back garden it's absolutely sweltering it's very hot. um so we'll come to we'll come to the end there um but before we do um how can i pray for you guys as lion of judah now we'll pray together um yeah i think just it, it's still a relatively short period but as as we discussed we're maybe like five years old at this point yeah and so we come to we regularly come to big decisions that we have yeah. to make in terms of securing a, a future for the band yeah whether that's monetarily or like yeah inspiration or whatever it is but we're facing we're always bit facing big decisions and it's sometimes not easy to know which route to take yeah so just for wisdom basically so for wisdom but then also for that god would continue to use it to bless christians like we're really humbled to see people message us and say god's using this music in this way cool. and so just for that to continue great um, cool, well, let me pray for you now. We can uh, pray at home as well for these guys for the wonderful ministry they're doing. So let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for uh, the ministry of Lion of Judah, for the musical skills you've given them, for the, uh, the music they've produced, which has blessed so many of us at Grace Church and in the UK, but also has this worldwide um, focus. Lord, please might you continue to use this um, with the, the heartfelt lyrics, the gospel-centered words they use, the good music, would those all uh, work in the hearts of both believers and not um, to build them up, to push them towards deeper faith and trust, hope and joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord God, we pray for these guys. We pray for Isaac and Jez from our own church. We pray for uh, Josh and Adam, Matt and Dave uh, from other churches. Please would you continue to be with them at this time. Um, Lord, would you make their path um, straight for them as they look uh, to the future of the band in terms of um, finances and inspiration and new ways in which they can build up your church. Lord, please may you work in them. Uh, we thank you for your continued provision of so many different gifts in the church. And we thank you for the opportunity to hear from Isaac now about uh, the way you've been using this music. Please would it encourage us in the following weeks as uh, we continue to live together through uh, lockdown seeking to trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Great, thanks very much, Isaac. Before we pray, let's read from Psalm 85. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together, righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before them and prepares the way for his steps. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are such a great and a glorious God. Uh, thank you that you are uh, so holy um, and so pure. Uh, thank you that uh, you are so strong and that you can protect us uh, through all things. Father, help us to be like the psalmist, to listen to you, that through Jesus, um, that we would be faithful and righteous. Thank you so much uh, for Jesus. Thank you that he left the glory and perfection of heaven uh, to come to earth um, and to die on the cross in our place. Thank you that he took the punishment we deserve. Thank you so much for your mercy and for your grace and for your love. Father, we celebrate um, uh, with you um, and together for Nadia. Uh, thank you uh, for her decision uh, to trust you um, and to follow you um, as her Lord and her God. Thank you so much for the encouragement of seeing her joy and her delight um, in you. Father, we pray for others doing um, Christianity um, Explored courses, that they would see you uh, for who you are and what you've done, and that they would decide to follow you. Father, help us in our personal evangelism, evangelism as well, that you would give us opportunities and boldness um, uh, to share with others uh, uh, what you've done for us. Father, thank you so much for protecting us individually um, and as a church um, over the last few months um, uh, from COVID. Lord, we especially pray um, uh, thank you for keeping the vulnerable people safe um, and people uh, who've needed to travel. Lord, give us wisdom about reopening uh, the church. Lord, also give wisdom to our council, um, uh, to the government, um, as lockdown is released. Lord, we pray um, um, especially for wisdom for governments who are really um, uh, struggling, whose countries are really struggling at the moment. Uh, especially we think of South America um, and India. Uh, Lord, where uh, the virus is, uh, is spreading, uh, Lord, there's so much uh, pain and, and discomfort uh, from in ill health and the financial uh, consequences. Uh, Lord, provide these countries all that they need. Pray especially for Christians um, in these countries that they would keep their eyes fixed upon you, um, uh, that you would comfort them and help them through their time of difficulty. Lord, I pray supernaturally that they would uh, continue to experience um, uh, your peace and your joy, um, even in challenging situations. Lord, pray for that here in the UK um, as well, uh, as we continue to have restrictions and can't necessarily live our lives in the way that we want and may be facing uh, really real financial uh, difficulty. Help us to trust you, um, uh, to keep our eyes uh, fixed upon you. Uh, comfort us and Lord use us as a church uh, to comfort others. Father we also thank you so much um, for Cindy um, and for Grace and the new lives uh, that are inside uh, each of them. Lord we do pray that you would keep uh, them um, and their babies safe and Lord as these uh, babies are born help them to grow in uh, knowledge and love of you uh, that they would follow you um, all of their lives. Father, I also pray for each and every one of us um, at Grace Church, uh, that we would see you clearly, that we would uh, love and treasure you more than anything else in life. Lord, give us great times reading your word, great times of prayer, and help us to love you um, with all of our heart, mind, soul and strength. Amen.
together now. As um, after every Sunday, we always have a time of uh, virtual coffee on Zoom after the service. If you get John's regular Sunday emails, you'll have the link in your inbox. Please do join us. We break up into little breakout groups so it's, it's manageable to catch up and see how each other are doing, to encourage one another and enjoy some social time together. It'd be good as we come towards the end to pray together using the words of the Lord's Prayer. So at home, wherever you are, let's say the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Well, do have a look at John's email to see everything that's going on this week. It's a prayer meeting week, so please block out some time on Wednesday evening to join us online for a Zoom prayer meeting. Hope to see you in about five minutes. And as we finish, some final words from the book of 1 Thessalonians. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Have a blessed week. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye.